It has been a long time since we all got together to play some hideous tomfoolery. How are y'all doing? Who it's are been you a people? While. <laughs> oh God, no! Oh, wow. And there is I can't <laughs> All right, and that's the end of the show, guys. I right. uh, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> thumbs up for Seether. Thumbs down. Uh, get out of here. Yeah. Isn't that stained? Oh, stained. Oops. Is it? I was thinking. Of, I was thinking a country song. Now. What's the difference? What's the difference? Are they not? <laughs> <laughs> Look, you got to know uh, your new metal. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Steve Griff, how are y'all doing? It's been a while since we've we've. Like seeing each other and talked. We're doing good, man. Staying busy. Staying busy. Shit. Yeah. You, you ain't kidding. We uh <laughs> we just finished up our uh like the first arc of our Patreon show yet last night. And uh I couldn't be more proud of how brutal that combat was. <laughs> so the circus oh. of, of tears. Uh, yeah, the right? carnival of tears. Carnival of tears, yes. The carnival of five dollar uh, yeah. tears and up. <laughs> <Right. laughs> nice. Uh, I've I've got a, I'm behind about three episodes on that, and I can't wait to hear how that all wraps up. Um, have you announced what the next one is going to be yet? Yeah, Steve's running it. That's right. I will be running a module for the first time ever on uh, on the microphone. So super nervous, but very excited. We're, we're expecting a light Patreon month that month. Yeah, <laughs> oh, really. Yeah. Down. <laughs> yeah, I know. I plan on on canceling just, my I'm dropping membership. For, yeah. Wait until yeah. the next year. We had an HLP board meeting. Uh, <laughs> Patreon was too high. Had to knock that number down a little bit, but if we were in a tax bracket, we didn't want to be. (laughs) (laughs) Can't be paying taxes on this. Can't be paying taxes. Nope. (laughs) Uh, But yes, we. uh, I'm going to be running it. We will be playing a module called No Response from Deepmar. It's going to be very exciting. Cool. Cool. Neato. Can you can you like tell us what it's a little tea? Yeah, I just I've never heard of it. Uh -uh. Yeah, sure. So, um. What, what can I say about it that's not going to spoil it for Griff? Because this is going to come out long after that starts dropping for people. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so basically, um, Griff and the rest of the people who are going to be players on the show are going to um, get arrested. And then they are going to be shipped off to this penal colony to find <laughs> out. <laughs> penal. Yeah. You know me. Yeah. Um, but basically to find out what happened they're do- it's going to they're going to be trying to avoid jail time by solving a mystery uh, kind of okay. like a, a plea bargain or, or what have you um Neat. basically it's this it's this it's this mining colony that everybody disappeared from and they're sending oh, wow. the prisoners there to say hey figure it out very australia of them yes it's just insane <laughs> it's got some some suicide squad kind of vibes a little Yes, yeah, some some divinity. Well, okay, get, get on you. You guess my character, Harley Quinn. <laughs> oh, well, if <laughs> nice. I you wasn't, knew it, you all knew it was coming, and we all Listen. know he can do the voice. You all uh-huh. know I can do the voice. I don't even have you. You know so well that I don't even have to prove it. If I wasn't a patron before, <laughs> money. I'm not going to be one now. I'm certainly going to be one now. <laughs> oh, no. That's not fair. I am uh, a patron. Same. I mean. <laughs> Uh, uh, fun. Okay. That sounds fun. Well, Griffin, uh, before we get into like recapping and, and what we're doing, um, you know, we're recording in the morning on Saturday morning, so I don't know how this is going to go. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to say this might be the tradition. earliest round robin. Uh, yeah, asking what everybody's drinking I've ever done. But Adam, I see, I see your cups in the air. So what are you drinking, bud? Coffee right now. Now, <laughs> when we get to the next uh, couple. Uh, episodes that we're going to do in this session, uh, I'll probably have a beer, but I'm starting my day. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll coffee. break out the booze later, but r- raise your hand if you're not drinking coffee. How's that? Okay. Oh, wow. All right. We got, we got two out of, two out of six. Uh, Zach, what you drinking then? Well, it's not coffee, but it is, uh, caffeine. If it's fucking um, tea. I'm going to, mm. I'm going to come over it's, there. <laughs> no, it's, it's not tea. So here's the deal. Uh, oh, Josh the got tea. really into buying <laughs> these, like, Juju energy powder mixes. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. I'd never heard of them. Is he drugging Josh... you? <laughs> yes, please Play help. twice please if you're help. in trouble. Please help. <laughs> uh, no, but it's like um, it's like you know the uh the red, white, and blue bomb pop flavor. Oh, yeah. That's right. what it is. It's a it's a nice like dark greenish blue. In the I don't know if you guys. I'm afraid I to can't spill. Quite see I can't that. see the dark greenish blue, but I will tell you that's a strange coincidence because. I just got a new pre-workout that is bomb pop flavored. 
Huh. And that's a that's a good flavor to have mel- like a melted bomb pop in your mouth. Yeah, it's good. Mm. On a, on it's a, tasty. On a hot February day. I was just going to say, <laughs> like, <laughs> if there was ever a time for it. I mean. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of somebody yes. that's looking hot in February. Hey, Heath, what you drinking? <laughs> hey. I'm drinking water and Mountain Dew. Not mixed, just separately. <laughs> separately. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll cut it. Cut it. We'll cut with tap water. Dilute the dew is, oh, is such a great. I mean, that's a missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Steve, you got to. Right, so the rest of us are drinking coffee. That's the deal. Uh, well, Steve and I got LaCroix. Yeah. Hey, folks. Steve here from Hades Laughter Podcast. <laughs> I play Matoon Bay Saw and Mr. Serpent on that show. Uh, check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash uh, Hideous Laughter to listen to me play Comstock Paddywhacker in season one of the Link Legacy podcast. Uh, season two is coming up, but I'm going to be GM in that. That's very exciting. I'm also going to be playing a to be determined character on the upcoming Bestow Curse show. That is the 2E uh, converted Jesus Curse of the Crimson Christ. Throne. Uh, <laughs> Wow. A uh, show that we're going to be putting out pretty soon when we hit the next Patreon goal. And if you're interested in hearing the man behind the magic, hit me up on Discord at Ferasma Saves. <laughs> you you There's wrote too many down, shows now. There's you, too many Steve. shows now. We can't, we you can't wrote, no longer do that. I, 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 no longer do that. I gotta get I gotta get my plugs in. <laughs> Oh man! Like you gotta start I dropping love... the lowest ones, like Mr. Serpent. Stop fucking saying that. <laughs> no, <laughs> Nobody knows who Mr. Serpent is. Shut your face! Oh yes, they do. <laughs> they don't know Mr. Character Serpent. Character I played for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, it's one well. of my favorite. My best fan art is Mr. Serpent. <laughs> <Mr. Shot>. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, do you have a sidearm with your coffee? Uh, not yet. I've got. Something up my sleeve, but I desperately needed my coffee first. I, I feel you. And I you guys, you guys are an hour chill. even earlier than us, but Steve and I stayed up till 4 a.m. listening to Ooh. Bob Witch Energy playlists. Yeah. It got weird. It got weird. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to that stained and seether. Oh, there, there was a little bit there of, uh, uh, geez, seether. There was a little bit of seether. There wasn't a lot of stained. <laughs> that oh. came later. Bob Witch got me seething. I'm all oh. stained now. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Oh my. Uh, all right. Well, it's been a while. It's been a while. Damn it. <laughs> um, and so let's just kind of recap what's going on in oh, this adventure. Um, so the five of you found yourself on Susculin at the wrong time in the wrong place uh, because the swarm decided to do an all out attack on this planet. And so in the first book you guys spent that whole book basically running across the surface trying to get away from the ever encroaching horde of swarm um kind of at the end of that journey you found this temple of hylax where there was this priest the sheeran priest zalonin um, and there seemed to be some significant activity surrounding this temple um when you found zalonin he was kind of in this weird trance uh that was he was held by you know um kind of telepathic trance by some kind of hive mind weirdness from the swarm or maybe hylax or whatever but he was because he's sheeran and he has that uh telepathic link and kind of connection to to the swarm and to the sheeran and all that this that temple was a focal point for the swarm in that they were coming there and wanted it and in Zalonin was trying to protect it but realized that that was hopeless and he scooped him out and you got him and a few survivors on the last ship out of Susquehann and you managed to to take off and watch in horror as Susquehann was completely overwhelmed by the swarm um, and in the center of this horde as you were flying you saw this giant giant swarm component that had like multiple heads like reaching out um it's the biggest swarm component you've ever seen it was terrifying but you got out of susquin and flew through a debris field of destroyed escape ships and pods and everything and so like it was pretty tragic you know susquin took some heavy casualties something like 80% of its population destroyed. Um, And you found that Eutranius was where the refugees were going. It's another planet in the same system as Susquehann. And so you started to make your way there. 
in this ship. Now your ship had some problems. You had some some uh, political issues going on on the ship that you guys handled in your own way, in your own special way. Um, and you managed to get to Eutranius and get all of the survivors there. Um, and when you got there, you were all promoted within the SDF to kind of this, the Midnight Squad has become kind of a special forces unit that operates outside of the normal chain of command of the SDF. The lieutenant um, squad. Right, right. <laughs> but <laughs> the it, only to, five lieutenants in the SDF. To, to teach you all a little humility, uh, Commander Najiri gave you guys some kind of basic um, city management tasks, you know, going to clean out the sewer systems, going to, uh, and, and you also went and put out a fire, well, didn't put out the fire, but saved some people from a fire. Um, and Went to this emergency broadcast system for a fake bomb threat, and in all of that, you found out that there was this group, this cult called the Reckoners, led by an android named Sister Spark, who were embracing the swarm and felt that the swarm was coming to cleanse Eutranius of the sins of of all the people that that lived there, and that by embracing it, that they would be spared by the swarm. Now y'all are pretty well aware that the swarm don't give a shit about nothing you know what i mean um and that sister spark and her reckoners were very sorely misinformed with their beliefs um and you went and you saw a sermon that she gave and tex went up there to to be like you know one of the volunteers that she was gonna help save and whatever mental like abilities she was using to convince people of, of her preachings backfired when she tried to do it on Tex and she got real freaked out and shut down the sermon and went and you guys decided well this is the time to deal with it and so you went back into the Reckoner's compound took care of some guards killed Sister Swarm or Sister Spark and her Sheeran uh, Technomancer that she had as her kind of her right hand person and you found, after dealing with that in her computer, some schematics for a cave system. Um, and next to that cave system, there was a bunch of pictures of like ancient swarm. And so you don't know exactly where that cave system is, but you know that the intent was the Reckoners were going to use that as kind of a place to escape and hide out while the swarm came. Um, and so where we ended the last section is that you guys were going to head back to the SDF headquarters and talk to Commander Najiri and kind of try to sort out this information. Now, Heath, you had set up a meeting with Zalonen um, as well to talk a little bit about Hylax and, and the Sheeran's history. Is that correct well but hadn't he been ghosting me and not yeah didn't he, he blow him off for a couple of days he blew him off so you guys could do that dungeon so we could do this when i wanted to do it oh, okay <laughs> so so he's available now i'm suddenly <laughs> available my lunch Sorry. meeting was canceled yeah, yeah. i was out that i <laughs> i was busy the railroad train was delayed <laughs> he was like in yeah. an opium den for like three days <laughs> yeah. sheer and uh, sex but... does not follow a schedule so <laughs> I just kind of had to go with it <laughs> uh so i don't know do you guys have any questions or does that kind of sum up where we're at I think that sums up pretty well. We kind of get to these caves. Uh, yeah. Well, first things first is that you, you're going to report back to Najiri, right? Yep. I um, think so. and, 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 you know, hopefully their resources will help you find where these caves are. Um, so let's get going. Um, so if you remember, STF has taken over city hall as kind of their base of operations. Um, and you have downloaded all that information that was on Sister Spark's computer. So you, ha you have all that content. Um, you didn't even have to sign up for Patreon to get it. It was, wow. it was, it was yeah. free. Tearless. Uh, that, that's, just, Tearless. that's just bad business right there. <laughs> well, Damn, you know, Sister Spark, get it together. Yeah, the Reckoners 
they were misguided throughout their entire organization. It's just the business model they had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you 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 arrive at City Hall and and head to um, Najiri's office, and she beckons you in. She says, uh, "Good good job, team. Uh, please tell me what it is that uh, you have discovered." Not all at once. It's, it's, uh, I can I can only listen to one of you at a time. Yavar just stares at Tex. Like, <laughs> Everybody's uh, looking at Tex. Uh, yeah. I'm literally <laughs> looking at I'm trying to lock eyes with Heath over the internet. It's not working. It's not working. I was trying the same as well. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when you make me play at 11 a.m. after my <laughs> night shift. Heath is like, who the fuck is Tex? Where are we? Tex. No, I know who Tex is. I was just more like... For one day, can y'all just pull me through this? <laughs> nope. Um, yeah, I mean, Tex, uh, you know, kind of locks eyes with us. It. like, well, the first thing that we discovered is that the Reckoners are full of shit. <laughs> yes, I, I, I think that I agree with this assessment, Lieutenant Arcana. Yep. Um, I, what, what did we learned about caves is what I know. Yeah, we have this uh, data pad. It's got some cave schematics on it. Maybe some, I don't know, it looks like someone smarter than me probably knows what these are. Maybe some sort of relic. Uh, uh, but we don't know where the hell this is. All right, so you can take, like, the images and the the caves and run like a culture or computers check if you want to um, kind of search the infosphere so about some just some general history. Um, Vin's already on it. Let's go. I mean, I'll, I'll roll a culture. Just yeah, I'll take a shot at a culture. All right, uh, thirty-seven. 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 Okay. No, no, no. Dirty-seven. As in, Dirty. Yeah. As in, Dirty. Th- it's a seven. Right. But uh, I didn't roll a seven on the die. Damn. <laughs> I got I got As, a tw- I got a twenty six, but uh, okay. I'm gonna need someone to put that on the board because that was <gasps> oh, a new oh. oh. I, we also need to talk about the board. I think because we didn't we last did, time we didn't time. announce the winners after the last segment. All yeah. right. Well, do you want to do that right now? We can. Yeah, leave us on this <laughs> watcher check cliffhanger. Uh, excuse Adam. me, yeah. Commander Najiri. We, uh, Hold on. we have some we very important to business to take care of. Hold we got okay, we we to take care of. Love. We've, just, we've got a little just bit a of moment. dick measure in the handle right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we didn't, we forgot in all the excitement last time to go over the winners of the, the competition. But also, after the last one, I think I talked to Griff for a little bit and realized kind of a flaw in our system in that, you know, we're calculating or or we're tallying crits and we're tallying crit fails, but we're really only giving credit for the crits, right? The, the fails don't really factor in. Um, so we're going to be changing that. And just like we take our, our crits and divide it by the number of players per show, we're going to do the same thing with fails and then subtract that from your crit total. And that's going to be, I think that's uh, the best measure of turns. Uh, yes. I like it. Right. Like that's it. math. Y'all. That's just, it is. That's why math. I'm not going to let you be involved with it. I at appreciate all. it. You know, <laughs> we're there, man. We know on a level of certainty that I would fuck that up majorly. <laughs> I just wanted to be known that this was a, this was a conclusion that Heath and I drew at like three in the morning one day. <laughs> definitely I was. think that was probably assumed. We can't get a good read on it if we're measuring two different things. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, Griffin it's like needs to their best work at three in the morning. It's true. <laughs> yeah. We do. Uh, but it's such basic, like, it's what you should do for this kind of system that, like, how did we go through five so took rounds us a book and a half thinking to about it? it. <laughs> right. First off, don't come at me with basic math, okay? That's your first mistake. <laughs> Her. All right, so what's the result? <laughs> okay, so uh, Southern Tom Foolery last time, it was kind of light for everybody. We didn't have a lot on the board comparatively. But uh, Southern Tom Foolery had four crits um, and three fails. So if you take the four and divide it by three, that's 1.3 repeating. Uh, the three 
obviously divided by three is one so our total would come out to 0.3 repeating of course nice. damn that's exciting of course <laughs> right <laughs> i love those big numbers man <laughs> the numbers are really shocking I love to see it yeah yeah uh hideous laughter only had two crits but they had no fails so their mm, total nice. would I think be that puts us at a dirty one. one. A dirty <laughs> one. A dirty <laughs> one. <Clean> yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is this is the one I've been looking forward to. The Swarm, aka Adam fucking Kelly, had uh, one crit and three crit fails. So he's gonna have a <laughs> negative total. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's what I'm going for. Well, you gotta, do, you gotta, minus. of course, divide that over the number of creatures he had to play. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. we're not doing Wait that. Wait <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, all right, so that looks like Hideous Laughter wins book two, uh, or part two. No, not book, book two. two. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Huzzah. Huzzah so, and hurrah. With a natural 20 to start off part three of book two. We're coming back uh, strong. Natas- I'm feeling real good about this. Yeah, Natasi, with your culture, you kind of file back through some of the uh, data in your head, and you uncover some information about the early Shirin pioneers um, during their flight from the swarm. So, centuries ago, these Shirins attempted to settle on Eutranius at the same time that others of that population intermingled with the people of Suskelin. So, when the Shirin were escaping the swarm, you know, when they had, like, pulled away from the hive mind and, and got their independence there was this long flight uh this long exodus where the swarm kind of chased them for a while and they they had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations to fully break and this is one of the systems that they came to and so you're well aware that Susquehan was a place that they landed as You know, you saw the temple there, and there's a high population of Sharon on Susquehan. But Eutranius, you you see that also they tried to start their population here. But it's unclear exactly what happened to those Sharons because the Susquehaners did not detect any sentient life forms on the planet when they began planning colonization for Eutranius 100 years ago. You know, 300, 400 years ago, there's records of the swarm or of the Sheeran trying to settle here, but a hundred years ago, when people came here, there was there was n- no sentient life forms at all. Um, so, as Commander Nigeria is kind of part of this conversation and all that, she posits that it was it really really difficult to build permanent structures on Eutranius. Uh, until the stabilization formula was created because if you remember Eutranius used to be a very very unstable like surface on the planet like sinkholes and there was no like hard surfaces anywhere it was all soft and then some scientists developed this formula that kind of firmed up and scientists built different. the levees so we could have <laughs> yeah Eutranius. something like that yeah um, and so that she thinks that it's likely that the early Sharon settlement must have failed. I'll roll over that culture check and you can surmise that the images of the carvings that the reckoners found in these caves that are that accompany the schematics um, are evidence of something left behind by those Sharon pioneers. Nigeri kind of gets an idea and she's like, okay, uh, one, one second, Let, let's try one thing. And she pulls up a map of the city and the surrounding area and imposes the Reckoner's map over it and is able to kind of line it up in such a way to where a, this is likely where these maps are and, or these caves are and the largest of the caves lies under a temple to Hylix in a neighborhood in New Graca called Old Town. The name of this temple is called the House of Friendship. The small side tunnel that's marked on the cave map that says entrance seems to connect to the basement of a business named VibraClean, an automated laundry facility that uses sonic energy to get clothes clean, commonly known as a sonny mat, and that that's like, uh, you know, a block away from this house of friendship. If somebody wants to roll a computer's check on the VibraClean name, you're more than welcome to do that. 26. All right, with that 26, you are able to really quickly, like, as... As Natasi's like, and 
in the gear. You're like, oh, this is where the vibe, you know, it's fiber clean or whatever. You're like, oh yeah, okay, fiber clean. Um, the owner of fiber clean is on Sister Sparks' list of blackmail targets. Oh. Um, oh. And mm-hmm. so you know that they were likely using the fiber clean as their entrance point and kind of keeping it secret, you know. Um, using vibe clean kind of as a cover, kind of like uh, Archer. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, laundry mat. <laughs> or, or, or like uh, Breaking Bad too. You know, mm. like. I haven't seen that. Uh, well, there's a lab that's beneath a giant laundry mat. So. Oh, okay. Anyway, so that's what you you gather analyzing the maps and, and with Najiri's help figuring out where it is. She you know she points out that Nugraka is in desperate need of more emergency shelters should the swarm attack Utranius, which seems to be just inevitable, right? Um, and she says, you know, whether or not there is anything of historical value to find in these caves she really thinks that this area could be used as a refuge to relieve some of the pressure of trying to find places to put refugees. Um, so she wants you to explore the caves and assess their stability and to do some surveying of the caves, uh, and make sure that they're free of any dangers so that relief workers can outfit them for any occupation if necessary. She also reminds you, just remember that the Reckoners managed to enter these caves, so you should keep an eye out for surprises. It's like, yeah, duh. <laughs> right. Um, but she, you know, she suggests that you take the day and go early in the morning, you know, get some rest after a, a long day of dealing with the city's problems. Uh, but she does suggest that you shouldn't linger too long because have no idea when the swarm may attack. In the meantime, Tex, you get a call from Zalonen, or you get a text message saying that he's going to be at City Hall in about an hour. Hey, you up? <laughs> <laughs> Come and meet the you Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, that there'll be an opportunity for, for all of you to speak with Zalonen, but, you know, Tex, if you had specific things you wanted to talk to him about which gives you a day to kind of do any supplying shopping any any anything you need before you, you go towards these caves yeah so I, about this time then just kind of clasps sig on the back and says right uh i'll be back there mate uh i gotta see a man about a norse and he's gonna head out and uh, look what for. What did he say? You say about an I horse? No, an horse. About, about a horse. Got to see a man ho- about a horse. What the fuck's an horse? I don't know. <laughs> I have no uh, records in my cortex of that animal. I think he's. I think he's already messed up this early in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And Vin he's will go find the pops. nearest mnemonic editor uh, in, here in town. I'm, I imagine there has to be one in the city of uh, I mean Grocco. you would think but you know this place is strapped for supplies with all the refugees everybody's getting mnemonic editors to, oh, to yeah? be stronger Are they? against Port, the Port of Order is a mnemonic editor like a service or a an item it, so <clears throat> I actually have this pulled up um, yeah, I mean, I'm just curious because it could. It sounds like it could go both ways right like I'm going to the dry cleaner I'm going to the mnemonic editor or like I just bought a mnemonic editor it is a device that's also a service. So okay, it so. uh, consists of a complex series of brain implant injectors, digital hero deck auto readers, illusion runes, and virtual reality programs, all controlled by an enchanted analysis computer attached to a mobile surgical bed. Um, so a lot so, going on right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I yeah. guess like a mobile surgical bed isn't really like an item you would have, though. I, th- right. I think that's where I was thinking. Like, it's just a, it's a thing you can buy, and like later on, you could be like, I don't want to be a, <laughs> I, I want to erase my last level. Yeah, it. yeah, I don't think you can because it, it's quite heavy. It, it's ten bulk. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a surgical bed for it's sure. Sig can carry one around, maybe. Yeah. But. So I, I, I picture it like, like you go into a, a ripper dock or something, like you would go to get an augmented or something. You know, like. right? Well, in Utranius, you know, everything is is all automated and everything is like vending machines. So 
you you find it like the mnemonic editor uh <laughs> a little like storefront and it's just like five pods and everything's operated by like a little iPad and you just tell them what you want. Uh, but the price is like $5,000 because everybody's trying to get it. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Are you, are you yanking my chain right now? Yeah, I definitely am. Okay. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, then uh, his, his credit stick pays his 500 credits, fair market you, value. Well, well you, you got that SDF insurance plan. So, <laughs> so you're, you can get it. Uh, for cheaper okay. no it's it's 500 so what are you doing with it uh vin is going to undo a single level of uh, technomancer and take a level of operative nice nice yeah. all right all right so anyway uh he'll be doing that for the next 24 hours during the course of all this and um by the, I, i'm assuming by the time he finishes up we'll everybody be ready to go be ready for the caves yeah. sure uh all right so zalonin arrives is has anybody else wanted to do any shopping or anything i i don't need i don't want to shop or anything i just want to impart on commander nigeria because i don't think we highlighted it that we have this full list of uh of reckoner folks who were not at um sister sparks little commune uh so Mm -hmm. i want to make sure that gets delivered and we also found a whole bunch of intelligence on um on troopers that were committing acts of sedition and stuff so um, you got to get all that information. Yeah, the, the, that's stuff the they right. would want to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's very thankful for so. This this will be very helpful. Um, it, it is a, it makes me very sad that in, in these times that we would fight each other with such a threat of the swarm. But um, thank you for, for this information, uh, Natasi. And we will make sure that justice is served to those that deserve it. Absolutely. I implore that you move quickly as the Reckoners who were not at the little commune start finding out what happened to Sister Spark. They may scatter like roaches under a light. Hmm. Act quickly. Yes, Lieutenant. Oh, damn. She just like dropped your rank and everything. She was like, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So good, though. You, you do get that information passed on and... um you know, the authorities will take care of that for you. Zalonin arrives and uh, says, ah, it's good to see, see you, Midnight Squad. Where is the Hylaxian imposter? Uh, I don't know. He's off carousing. I think he's going him. to, he wants to be a Technomancer imposter now. So he's mm-hmm. going to, uh, Switch a couple levels. Perhaps one day that man will become more secure in who he is. Yeah, I think he's his having kind of an identity, identity crisis. Yes, it he's, seems that way. He's just asking us about horses and that kind of thing. I don't even know what the hell he was talking what about. What is an horse? I don't know. <laughs> it's so confusing to me. He does this kind of thing to me all the time. He just pats me on the back, says something I don't understand, and then just leaves. He's elusive. <sighs> A true hopefully, Johnny Namak. <laughs> hopefully Hylax watches over him and he finds some peace within himself. But that is not why I came here. I'm sorry, Tex, for not being available the last couple days. I had some important things keeping me. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, well, that was... <laughs> yeah, felt, felt a little sketchy. Um... But yeah, you you do you, man. You could send a text every now and then, though. I'm still trying to get better at that. I'm, I'm sorry. It's nothing personal. All right. Well, uh, hey, how you doing? Um, uh, where, I'm, I'm, where are we at? You're at the um, city hall. Yeah, he met us there. Oh, he came okay. to city hall. Yep. Not a fun place to meet. It's probably city halls have like a cafe. Totes, like a real like they like a like shitty a lobby Starbucks built built uh, into the lobby. Yeah, like a Starbucks kind of thing. But it's like again, it's all automated by vending machines. <laughs> it's like a shitty vending um, machine, machine coffee. S- Gross. So what what have you discovered? Uh, we went and dug into this cult thing called the Reckoners and we found a cave uh, 
that they use as a secret hideout we're gonna go check out. <sighs> um... They were using some kind of, or the, the their leader, Sister Spark, was using some kind of telepathy mind, something. I don't, I don't know. It's different from what like Tex and I have. I think. I, I don't know if it has something to do with the. Swarm because they they don't really actually seem like they are you know with the swarm and she kind of look over at Tex for confirmation and then look over at like the Tossi and Sig like am I am I right I'm trying to help <laughs> you got it girl they wish for their own demise it is strange it's unheard of for the swarm to make allies let alone use subversives like this they just eat. Everything. I can't understand why anyone would sympathize with them, let alone try to help them. These Reckoners would hardly be the first organization to form at a time like this, however. People can't do terrible things in the face of fear. You're fortifying the colony, and those of us in the priestly and healing professions are doing our best to strengthen our fellow citizens' minds and hearts for the trials to come. But sometimes that isn't enough. You see, the swarm has never been so subtle. But I'll make some inquiries about this psychically influenced Reckoner's uh, attempts that you're speaking of. It is a very troubling thought. Our ancestors fought long and hard to free their minds from the swarm. They were successful, but we know so little about how they did it. If there's any possibility that the swarm is trying to re-establish their hold, well, that's quite frightening. I must learn more about how our ancestors escaped their grasp. Um, you guys can roll a sense motive. Oh God, Sigurd. I forgot. I'm not very wise. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, it's a that's nine gonna for be, me. <laughs> it's going to be a two on the die plus a zero is a two. <laughs> that's better than I would have done with a two. I would have been a net zero with a two. Oh, no. I got a 23. Okay. There you go. Uh, well, yeah, with a 23, you can tell that Zalonin is you know, very being very truthful about what he's saying, but there's something he's holding back. Let's see, let's see lean in a little bit. Salona. We are about to go to a historically relevant site for your people. We may be able to find the information you're looking for. Sister Sparks... Hmm. Sister Sparks' records on the site that we're going to indicated that there were old cave paintings I guess of old swarm components and we know that your people once inhabited these caves. Could be that those cave paintings could push us in the right direction. We can deliver that knowledge to you but we wouldn't hold anything back unlike what it seems like you're doing now. Yes, I am I'm afraid that I'm not a very good liar, as this is not one of the tenets of Hylax. I'm trying to help where I can, but I can't stop thinking of the attack on Suskelin. The way they came from my temple, and that strange trance that I entered. I can't help but wonder what it was all about. He sighs. I, I didn't want to mention it. On the Terminus Wild, but I've been having regular nightmares since we left Susculan. In every one of them, I can sense a terrifying presence that I somehow know is called the God Host. And what's stranger is that some of my fellow Shirans here on Utranius have been having the same nightmares. 
You angels. spoke of the carv- the carvings. Yes. Correct. I'm no archaeologist, but from the style of these carvings, I would guess they are at least a few hundred years old. It is entirely possible that they are from that failed Sheeran settlement on this planet. But the subject matter is quite disturbing. Do you see these characters? There, Kuchani, the language of our ancestors before the swarm. If you find any more of these reliefs in the caves, I would love to see them. Do you speak or read this language? I do not speak it, as I do not, none of us know how to speak it, but we can translate it. I believe I can bring those characters back for you. Adam, is is there an opportunity here to roll a mysticism check for the God King? I was it called God, God King? God host. God host. Yeah. Um, or is that a different check? Uh, you can you can roll a check. Um, see see what. But it's not going to be mysticism. It's going to be life science. Pretty sure it's going to be intimidate. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, I've got a pretty shit life science, but that's a 23. I mean, you've never heard of uh, such title. Um, though I will say that you can probably intuit that it's likely that giant swarm component that you saw in the midst of the horde on your escape from Susquehann. You know, you don't really know any details about what that means that it's a God host or what the implications of that but you just get this sense that that is the god host, whatever it is. Okay. I'm still curious with, with the god host thing. I know, like, in the history of Starfinder, like, the swarm invaded, like, a decade or two ago, right? So, was, uh, during that time when they you're talking about the original swarm war? Yes, the original. Yeah, it was like war. yeah, like thirty years ago right. from the present. Mm-hmm. So the the god host like wasn't a part of that. No. Mm-mm. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, the god host is something new uh, that there's no there's well, no that's records. That's fucking in- terrifying because yeah. they were like was really there- successful in the first swarm war. Yeah. Was there ever like? mention of a swarm component as big as the one Good question. That, we saw? That, was, that was about to ask In- you. Uh, no. No. So mm-hmm. to Heath's point that it, I would think that all of you are very unsettled at this idea of this newly evolved component that is one, referred to as a god host. Two, bigger than any swarm. You know, I mean, other than like some of the swarm starships you know, like right. mm-hmm. but like one that's that's not serving as a starship. Yeah, this is it's so, huge. What, as far as the God host, like when we saw it, I mean, it looked like its own entity, or is it possible that it was like made up of other swarm components, like a, a I mean, horde linger, a, a Voltron? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In Voltron, uh, that's it. Sorry. So it would be hard to say for certain because of the circumstances in which you saw it. You know, right. you were in in high escape mode, but it did not look like it was built up of multiple swarm components, you know. It had a, the best way I can describe it is it had like a Hydra Mm -hmm. look to it, you know. Okay. I was like, that would be really interesting, though, if it was made up. (laughs) It was made up of eight MacGuffins we've got to go find. (laughs) The best (laughs) attributes of all the swarm components. That's why they're called components. Right, I'm the right. complete. <laughs> <laughs> Natasi, I mean, she knows this information. This is something that she would bring up in a in a later conversation. It would be kind of weird just to dump that exposition right in front of Salona. Not like I'm trying to What's keep it from it's just like a weird conversational thing to be like, by the way, I think that's Oh, well, he's, gotcha, he's yeah. you know, that's kind of well, his wheelhouse is yeah, weird he's, conversation. He's into it. That's um, fair. I will say he'll he will continue to offer up some information, um, you know, as you guys are kind of speculating about these caves and everything, and about what the Sheerans 
were doing there. I, I'm not sure. I can't be. But it can't be a coincidence that the House of Friendship was built almost directly on top of these caves. Perhaps the priests of Hylax who constructed the temple were drawn to this area somehow. Again, the, it seems as if my ancestors have left tremendous amounts of psychic energy that is being awoken now at the presence of the swarm. This is highly unsettling for me and my people. Yeah, I'd imagine. I, I, Emily has a dumb question. The weird crystal thing that was in the Temple of Hylax that we originally found Salonin mm -hmm. at, did we ever find out like what that was, the thing that was floating in yeah, the Yeah, that was playing? channeling Zalonin's psychic energy to protect the temple. It was like basically putting out okay. a um, it's like a shield well, booster. <laughs> like if you remember when you first came up, the swarm were there was swarm outside the temple that were kind of entranced, you know. So what mm -hmm. it was was like a way to like kind of shut down the hive mind and kind of paralyze them with psychic energy and just make them entranced by it. Yeah. But, but Zalonin could only support so much of that you know and eventually would have been overwhelmed hey Zalon and we we were just thinking about when we found you and everything that that crystal you use for safety um you, that you were you were using to entrance the swarm is that something that your people or or followers of Hylax in general utilize commonly or is that something that you just had access to it is it is an old artifact I wouldn't say that it's common in Hylaxian only because it is relics of our ancestors in their escape from the swarm we have not been able to replicate these crystals so you are more likely to find them in ancient temples than you would be in modern places of worship. If there were more huh. priests with you, would you have been able to... Could that crystal have sustained more energy? Could you have created a bigger barrier? Yes, but upon seeing the amount or the size of the horde that was on Sisklin, no amount of priests could have withstood that amount of components. Do you have to be a priest? Or you can have you to be, be a true believer? Unlike your friend. Well, he doesn't have much psychic energy anyway. <laughs> From Very what I understand, he's about to become less magical than he was before. What about you, Tex? Have you considered the ways of Hylax? Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. Uh, and and he also turns to Yavari and he's like, and I'd like for Yavari to be a part of the conversation. Of course. I think it's been a little bit one-sided in that you've come in and mentioned Hylax stuff to me a couple of times, but it also has a lot to do with, with my connection to Yavari. So, uh, you know, I was going to ask, is there anything else you can tell us about that connection or... or I mean, frankly, why you think it's from Hylax and why Hylax would choose somebody like me. I could see him picking somebody nice and sweet like Yuvari, but, like, I'm just an old cowboy and a damn good liar at that. He didn't even point at either of us, Natasi. I Hylax works in mysterious ways, Tex. I cannot begin to assume why chosen. All I can tell you is that I see her influence on you and Javari. And there is a connection between you that is so Hylaxian in nature that it is one of the key reasons why I agreed to come with you. You led me here. You were you're a part of this. I don't know why. I'm just a lowly priest. 
But I have no doubt that the bond between you and Yavari will be important for the future against the swan. Well, oh, I'm sorry. All, all I can tell you is to try to live up to the ideals of Hylax. Friendship, diplomacy, understanding, independence. I'm good at three out of four. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> um, so, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I'm confused by all this, but I will say, I mean, for my own part, I'm starting to maybe come around a little bit to this Hylax stuff after some of the stuff I've seen and in, in some of the combats and harrowing situations we've been in lately. But I mean, Yuvari, we hadn't really talked about this much. What do you think about all this? Um. That, you know, I'm, I'm all about friendship, and I'm, I'm not very good at talking pretty, but I try to be diplomatic when I can. I, I don't have anything against Tylex, and, and if, if they, she, whatever, stands for that, then I mean I'm for it um I just want to keep doing the best that we can Tex and if that you know aligns with this Hylaxian situation and that's I mean I'm I'm all in and she just kind of like kneel down and look at you in the eyes and just sort of nod like I'll follow your lead Tex oh, you pats her on the cheek yeah, I don't, I don't know what all this is going to amount to, but that was awesome. <laughs> that was so- uh, I will say, one, once you guys kind of make that decision as, as a pair, both of you, like you feel this little tingle in your brain, and both of you are now able to speak Sheeran if you were not. Um, so, so like, I don't know. Can I speak Sheeran? I, d- I can't. Yavari's very limited on <laughs> yeah, what she can I speak. I already could speak Sheeran. Well, you can speak it better. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I, I think that's pretty much all Zalonen has to offer. And I, at this point, uh, you know, Vin comes back from his editing. Uh, at kind of probably later at night because well, it takes some time to do that, you know. Adam, so. I actually think you know after they have this conversation with Zalone and Sig would kind of go over to the the vending machines, grab two coffees, and turn to Zalone and after they've had their conversation, hey, you mind sitting down with me for a minute? be my pleasure and so he'd find a table sit down and pass alone in one of the coffees hey look I um, I wanted to apologize for the way I treated you the other day I know we we haven't always seen eye to eye with the situation and I know I can kind of be I can kind of come off as a intimidating threatening kind of guy but I don't mean you any harm. When when you were talking about having nightmares, I've been having them too. Not about any god host or anything, but parts of me that I can't grasp. I can't, I don't remember fully, but I feel like they happened. And I I think that's why I'm you know, I I don't want to I don't want to pin it on that but I am sorry for the way I acted towards you. Sigurd, 
It is quite all right. These are stressful times for all of us. I apologize for pressing too hard. As far as your nightmares are concerned, I, I cannot tell you how to stop them, but I might suggest that you embrace them. As scary as they may be, it sounds as if your mind is trying to tell you something. The more that you experience, I would be happy to talk through them with you. Well, just like your nightmares scare you, I'm worried about, I'm worried about what mine are going to say. I just don't know. Right now, I'm kind of feeling lost. Sigurd, the Shirin were once the swarm, but now we are our own independent people. Who you are matters by what you do now. The things that have happened in your past have shaped you, yes, but you do not need to be defined by them. The decisions you make today are what matter. And I have seen you protect numerous people, including myself, against the swarm. Well, I figure out who you were, but do not be scared and assume that that defines you today. I appreciate that. It, it makes me feel a little better. It makes me feel better apologizing to you, honestly. It makes me feel good to do good. I just keep having yes. these thoughts that these memories, these flashes that make me worried. But you're right. I, if I do good now, I can be good. I think it is always within your power of choice to do good or bad. We fought lifetimes against the mind control of the swarm to have our choice. Don't take that choice for granted. Our people had to fight for it. You were born with it. Something tells me, somehow, some way, I might have had to or I might have to fight for it. You will appreciate it that much more. I can assure you. Thanks, buddy. Now, I don't drink coffee. Oh, so damn. I would have bought you something else. I just assumed you... I was just trying to be nice. I was scared that you were going to yell at me again. Uh, I can get you something else. Uh, it's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, he, he, you definitely see his body language kind of relax a little bit after that conversation. And, e and even more so, he seems to look at you a little differently now with a kind of uh, maybe a little bit more understanding or, or compassion uh, and, and he, he makes clear that he's available for any, t any time you would need to or want to discuss anything you know awesome cue Natasi intimidating the shit out of Zalone <laughs> it is time, it is time. alright it's my turn now <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's talk. Uh, Listen, no. bro, <laughs> stop talking about friendship. We're at war. <laughs> um, yeah, so Vin, Vin comes back uh, looking a little less magical, but a little bit more roguish than, than he did. I mean, you know, <laughs> sort of, yeah. A little less glow, a little bit more shade. Um, <laughs> Sorry, pretty shady. How'd that horse taste, buddy? 
And no, so, no, no. The the party, like, Something you eat. Like, yeah, right. It's like, or it's just, yes, is a food. It's as good as mine. <laughs> um, and you guys get, you know, I'll go ahead and get you a long rest if you haven't done that already. Um, and in the morning, you know, I assume you want to head into Old Town and then to Viberclean to kind of find if you can get into these caves. We're going to take this say, course uh, to that Old Town Road. Yeah, just mm. hit, hit up mm. the Old Town. Is that mm. a restaurant? Mm. <laughs> Old Town Road's restaurant. <laughs> I'd like to quit, they please. Serve horses. <laughs> I'm going to burn Resolve to channel to heal till I can't no more. <laughs> <laughs> district near the center of New Graca and it features a distinctly older architectural style. Um, the buildings are more compact. They seem a little cozier than the steel frames and poured concrete typical of the rest of the city. Um, a tiny park adds a bit of green and other bright colors to the area. The House of Friendship is the neighborhood's most prominent feature. Its multi dome structure rises above the other buildings, large without being imposing. The front doors are wide open and the courtyard is filled with tents erected in neat rows to house Susquehanna refugees. One central patch is left clear for gatherings where children of multiple species are gathered around a host Sheeran storyteller. The grim despair that hangs over the rest of New Graca seems to be unable to penetrate here. Um, you see that the Sonny Matt Viberclean is only two blocks away from the House of Friendship. Um, and you see that it is open for business, but since it's fully automated, the only employees are machines. Um, the Sonomat has a large hopper with a connected computer console near the front of the business where customers can deposit their dirty laundry, choose and pay for their services they desire, and receive an RFID-enabled chip that allows them to pick up their clothes when they are clean. The remainder of the building consists of pulsating sonic baths, irons attached to robotic arms and a series of tracks near the ceiling that whisk clothing from station to station. Okay. Um, so, are there any attendants? There's any... Are, is it just like a... Fully automated. Fully automated. Mm -hmm. uh, can we look around the room? Is there a back room? Uh, you do see a locked plastic door marked employees only, uh, which you could assume would be like where maintenance mm -hmm. people yeah. would come into. Well, I'm thinking that, you know, any kind of entrance to these ancient caves is not going to be in the front of the building. <laughs> so, employees uh, no, only, it, whoever else that wants to go to the caves. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> no, in fact, uh, when you were looking at the map overlay, you saw that the entrance to the caves seems to line up directly like to the basement of Viber Clean. Okay. Uh, are there any other civilians um, in the in the business? No. No, it's empty. It's completely empty. Yeah, I mean, most of the business is front facing at this console that's like right at the front. You know what I mean? So there's nobody currently interacting with the console or dumping off clothes or picking up clothes. I mean, there's people around, right? Because as I said, the, the House of Friendship is two blocks away, and there's this whole, like, refugee camp set up. But there's nobody, like, currently interacting directly with the Viberclean console. Right, then, coast is clear. Let's get to work, Vin says, and we'll head over to that locked door and attempt to pick it. All right, that'll be an engineering yes. check. Ooh, I'm sorry. You have to be a level four technomancer. To Ooh, get yeah, yeah. I don't think, yeah, it, looks like I don't think it works that way. The way you can get in here is to be a level four technomancer. You have All to spend right. a level two spell slot. Y'all can so. hate on haters. My <laughs> my engineering skill is now two higher than it was a day ago. So oh, It's two whole skill points. Damn. Yeah. 500 credits well spent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be a 24. Oh, those two points did not give you enough. Oh, um, really? <laughs> yeah, um, but I'll I'll let somebody do an aid post if they want. A Adam, are there like security cameras? No. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, we don't want, we don't want to tip off these people that could be down in the caves. Is that this right. Computers or engineering? I'm sorry. Engineering. engineering. 
Oh yeah, that's a ten on the die. Uh, yeah, that's an eight. Yeah, so that'll get you over the DC, which was twenty five. Oh my gosh, um, for real? <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> nice. Um, and so you're able to, you know. Let me just pause for a second. In these adventure paths, like I always wonder. I mean, like, you have to get through this door to progress. You know what I mean? And so, like, they put these DCs here, and then it's like, well, if they don't make it through the door, what then? You know, right. I guess the you could down. beat it down, you know, but, like, it's just... What you if know, you don't beat the door down? I, yeah, right. I've, al- yeah, I've always felt like if it's something you have to have the party do, like, why put a DC there? Just right. have them do it. I, you know? I don't know. Maybe it's just to kind of keep people rolling dice so you never know what is exactly important what is it so right. the random but, encounter to your level five to see if your engine right, right. So. Right. there was there was this You're gonna abs- have to fight some more birds there's this absurd situation in return of the rune lords where you're going through this like dungeon and you go downstairs and the stairs just dead end and then you're supposed to do a perception check to find a secret door at the end of these dead end stairs to continue the dungeon you have to do. It's so fucking arbitrary. <laughs> right, like we right. we know where these stairs are going. Like there's got to be something here. <laughs> Why do I have to roll to see that <laughs> stairs just don't just go down and yeah. end? <laughs> right. Uh, all right. So you do unlock the employees only door, and I imagine you guys all kind of shuffle shuffle in. Um, and you, you go to the rear of the business where the bulk of the machinery can be found. Um, and let's roll perception checks, everybody, while you're kind of searching through the machinery here. Okay. 19. Also 19. 24. There you go. Oddly enough, also 19. <laughs> Dirty 8. All right, so the 24 <laughs> is the only one. Uh, Natasha, you're the only one who, as you guys are looking through here, finds a loose panel on one of the walls behind an automatic folding machine. Necessary to continue uh, through the dungeon. <laughs> right, right. Um, so you're able to pry that panel open with no no difficulty. It just was well hidden, I guess. And it reveals a narrow staircase leading to a basement walled in cinder block. Um so as you continue going deeper into Viperclean, uh, the air here is musty and cobwebs crowd the corner of the room. Aside from a filthy mop leaning against one wall and a handful of small chunks of rocks scattered across the floor, this chamber is entirely bare. Um, I'm going to roll over that perception check and that you find that there is a section of cinder blocks near the floor in the southern part of this room that are also loose. Now, this is going to take a strength check to move these blocks. Um, it is just a straight strength check, so one person can be the roller, and then everybody else can aid if they would like. I found the panel. This one's up to you. I think. <laughs> I thought she was going to be like, I got this. I got this. <laughs> everybody aid me. I think Yvari should roll. You want to roll. I got a plus four. Yeah, Sorry. yeah absolutely. Hey, so funny Sage enough. with a natural 20. I got a natural 20 as well, board. dude. Boards! Wait, boards are you, around! Wait, are you kidding? I got a natural 20 as well. What? Oh uh, every, every woman, Emily. Emily got a natural one, I'm sure. Got a natural uh, one. Holy <laughs> God! <laughs> oh my God. For, okay, so for the sake of the board, who got what? I got a nat 20. I got a nat 20. I got a nine with a plus zero modifier means I don't help. Yeah. <laughs> this is a real swingy uh, yeah. <laughs> pile of cinder blocks right there. Uh, okay, so that's a plus six to your one. So what are we looking at here? That's a well, 11 uh-huh. total. Uh, okay, so that's not enough. Shocking. Since we got three natural 20s, <laughs> I'm just going to say... Sh- Yavari slips yep. and falls on her face, mm-hmm. uh, but the, the the other three of you <laughs> combined can uh, Pick it up. <laughs> kind of push push it on through. You like trip and, over Yavari and then, and then yeah, like, just, like knock laughing into at it. Yavari. Yeah, yeah. Um, you all right, Ella? So you're right. <laughs> uh, Floor I slipped on a crab. You get him next time. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so you're able to push these blocks inward and reveal another passage leading down. This tunnel is dark. It's only six feet high, so you are you're gonna have to kind of b- b- hunch over a little bit. Um, 
Let's get some engineering checks. Ooh, yeah. That's a 26. All right. With that 26, uh, you're able to assess that this passageway was created with poor tools and weak acid. Um, the sounds of the sonomat machinery would have masked the noise of digging through the stone. Um, and then about after 100 feet of this tunnel, it ends in a spot where it looks like somebody broke through the wall that enters into the Caves of Pilgrimage. And I need you all to finish your caffeine, because we'll see you in a few hey. minutes. Hey! Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 <laughs>